Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magnar Nordahl, I'm a captain instructor on ATR aircraft. In this video I will explain the differences between ATR 42 and 72 and I will show the 600 variants ATR 42-600 and 72-600. The 500 variants are almost identical. The main difference is the cockpit instrumentation. The most distinct difference between the 42 and the 72 is the size. The 72 is 4.5 meters longer than the 42 and the wingspan is 2.5 meters wider. A closer examination reveals the following differences. The 42 has a shorter main landing gear fairing. On the left side, the 42 has six panel doors for the hydraulic system, while the 72 has five doors. Since the 72 is up to 4.4 tons heavier than the 42, they have different main landing gear, including larger wheels. For some reason, the landing gear on the 42 is more forgiving than the landing gear on the 72, which tends to bounce if your touchdown is less than perfect. And never make bounce landings. Just kidding. The 42 has steel brakes and the wear indicators look like this. The 72 has carbon brakes and the wear indicators look like this. Steel brakes are worn when they are hot. Carbon brakes are worn when they are cold. Therefore, they require a different braking technique, especially during taxi. The ATR 72 has a tail bumper. When the aircraft is parked, a tail probe is attached to the bumper as the aircraft might tip on its tail if the aft part of the aircraft is loaded before the forward part. The ATR-42 is shorter and doesn't need this. On the tail fin, the ATR-72 has three vortex generators. ATR-42 has those plus another six under the localizer antenna. ATR-72 has a refuel connector on the right-hand main gear fairing. On the 42, the refuel connector is located under the right-hand wing. This is more cumbersome for the refueling crew as they need a ladder, but it allows for the 42 to be refueled while engine number 2 is running in hotel mode. The wing tips are shaped differently, and while the ATR 72 has 5 static wicks, the 42 has 6. Since the ATR 72 is 4.5 meters longer than the 42, it can carry more passengers. The 42 is certified for up to 50 passengers with one cabin crew and the 72 can carry up to 74 passengers or 78 in a high density configuration. The 72 requires two cabin crew. All aircraft have a seat for the cabin crew in the aft of the cabin next to the entrance door. In the 72, the second cabin crew member is seated in the forward part of the cabin in front of the door to the cargo compartment and cockpit. This seat can be stowed away. Next up, the cockpit. In the cockpit, there are four details that make the 72 different from the 42. First, the flaps lever in the 72 has three positions, 0, 15 and 30. The flaps lever in the 42 has four positions, 0, 15, 25 and 35. As a side note, the 42-300 has flaps 0, 15, 30 and 45. The latter position is blocked and is only allowed to be used for emergency landing in normal atmospheric conditions. The reason is the risk for tailplane stall with eyes on the horizontal stabilizer. Since the variants have different flap positions, the flap indicators are different as well. Next, we have the trim indicator. On the 42, the green band ranges from 1.5 degrees down to 4.5 degrees up. On the 72, the range is from 0 to 2.5 degrees up. Finally, we have this placard showing the most important speed limitations. And this brings us to the next chapter.
Both variants are the same maximum operating speed, VMO, 250 knots, and same rough air speed, VB, 180 knots. The maximum maneuvering speed, VA, is 160 knots for ATR-42 and 175 knots for ATR-72. The landing gear extended speed is 180 knots for ATR-42 and 185 knots for ATR-42. The gear operating speeds are the same, 170 knots for gear extension and 160 knots for gear retraction. ATR-42 flap speeds are 180 for flap 15, 160 for flap 25 and 150 for flaps 35. For ATR-72, the speeds are 185 for flaps 15 and 150 for flaps 30. Here are the weight limitations. The ATR can be delivered with different max takeoff weight depending on the variant of the landing gear. The 72600 has a max takeoff weight of up to 23 tons, and this makes it very versatile. You can take 3 tons of fuel and 6 tons payload and fly for 4 hours, give or take. Maximum fuel capacity is 5000 kilos for ATR 72 and 4500 kilos for ATR 42. Both variants use the same engine, the Pratt Whitney Canada PW127. When the engine is installed in the ATR-72, it develops 2750 horsepower. When the same engine is installed in an ATR-42, it is derated to 2400 horsepower. The reason is that the shorter fuselage makes the rudder less effective. If the engine had developed more power, VMC, minimum control speed, would have been too high. The other ratings are shown here. But the longer fuselage has another effect. When operating in crosswind, the wind will push on the tail fin, and the longer the arm, the higher the moment. ATR-72 has a maximum demonstrated crosswind limitation of 35 knots. ATR-42 has 45 knots crosswind with flaps 15 and 25, and 44 knots with flaps 35. Despite having less power, the ATR-42 is about 20 knots faster than the ATR-72. The main reason is of course the ATR-42 is smaller and lighter. But even at the same weight, the ATR-42 is faster. And the reason is a bit funny. When ATR developed the 42500, they promised potential customers a cruise speed of 300 knots. But test flights proved that the aircraft was too slow. So ATR increased the cruise power until they reached the goal of 300 knots. As a consequence, the 42 has a higher cruise power than climb power. The cruise altitude depends on aircraft weight and atmospheric temperature. The altitude for maximum cruise speed is 16,000 feet for ATR-72 and 18,000 feet for ATR-42. But you can go higher if you want, as this will save fuel. Normal climb speed for ATR-42 is 160 knots and for ATR-72, 170 knots. Currently, I am flying both variants on domestic routes in the Maldives. Many airports have runways that are 1200 meters long. And the temperature is about 30 degrees Celsius, which is 15 degrees above standard. The 42 can depart from those runways with max takeoff weight, 18.6 tons. The 72 is limited to around 21.5 tons. But since the difference in dry operating weight between the variants is 2 tons, the ATR-72 can carry more payload. With 2 tons fuel, we can depart with 70 passengers and fly for more than 2.5 hours.
So there we have it. Both ATR variants are great performers. Because of low operating cost and good payload, the 72 is rightfully called a moneymaker. And while the 42 has less capacity, it is the right choice when you cannot fill up all the seats in a 72. ATR42 is also the original ATR size, which means it's more easy to fly and land. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and happy landing!